and how shapes them who are actually the people behind inspiration of all these projects i don't know how many times that steve is using uh, shapes for all of these cool projects so i think now stage is yours gabriel uh, inga i don't know if there's anyone else that we need to invite but uh, let's go a little bit to the rapid prototyping rapid iteration and how we will validate our ideas with shapes thanks a lot Ferhan. hey gabriel yeah, so we have the following agenda for today. So I'll start emphasizing why it's super important to spend time in a headset. Uh, and then Gabriel will show some live demo and his experience with other hackathons and, uh, you know, also touching base some AI. Talking about Steve, uh, I'm actually taking this opportunity want to say, like, how grateful we are for all the feedback we received about 2.0. Actually, <laughs> it was super, super helpful feedback that even forced us to reiterate and redesign, you know, a lot of things. So uh, we are grateful. And trailers are indeed very important. And, um... and by the way, we also have like a specific case where a team created an amazing trailer also with a lot of the ship's exam material. So we really look forward to share it uh, shortly after I gave an introduction, then happy to to go there. And of course, I mean, uh, I don't know if I'm going to disrupt anything, but if there are questions that pop up that might be relevant, please send them our way, Inga. I think that would be okay. Uh, we're always happy to answer those. Uh, uh, and I think we should still finish on time and we will see what we can manage later in case. 30 minutes. Guys, can perfect. you see my screen? Yeah, we can. We can see that. Okay, wonderful. So I actually had the privilege of being a judge for the hackathons uh, for several years so far. And uh, I was just uh, the judge for MIT Reality Hack for the grand final and Immerse the Bay at Stanford and uh, Pika Dev Jam and many others. And uh, as a judge, I'm looking at something that probably haven't been mentioned today. Like everything is super important. When I'm judging, I'm always trying to see if the app is authentic to the uniqueness of this medium, anything related to how we interact with the UI, with the content, does it feel like born and, uh, and really unique for VR or MR or AR, depending on what you're building. So the whole vision behind Shapes and uh, like why we're building this company is that we truly believe that spatial apps need spatial creation tool that it's super important to immerse yourself as soon as possible and as early as possible to the medium of your user so that you can come up with some great, unique, and high quality of ideas. And we still have a lot of interactions yet to be invented that do not exist today. And I touch base very quickly on, on the major things, right? I mean, it's a huge difference between flat screen and spatial, like flat internet and spatial internet, right? And uh, like on the flat screen, it's so easy to control where the user is looking at at the given moment. And we already spent years, you know, uh, mastering how we can, you know, improve the UX to make sure that people, I don't know, add an item to the shopping cart, right? Uh, but in VR or in mixed reality, it's, it's harder to control that. So our head is actually the camera and we as a human being and your user is a human being can actually look at any part of the space around. And it doesn't matter if it's mixed reality or is virtual reality. Mixed reality brings additional layer of complexity because you have to make sure how your you know, virtual immersive objects and assets interact with the real world. If it's like visible and readable at least, you know, can I touch comfortably the UI? And uh, also something that is usually kind of truly impress me when the teams uh, come with some incredible, unexpected type of very native to the medium of the UI. And this is how like your body become the interface, right? Your body becomes and inspire some incredible interactions. And to come up with those ideas, you really have to spend enough time in the medium. Um, I mean, it's a lot about ergonomics and com comfort. Probably during the hackathon, we compromise a lot on that. But when you, if you continue to work on your app after the hackathon, um, make sure that it's delightful and it's comfortable. You don't, like your users are not motion sick. And uh, if it's mixed reality, you really utilize the real world in the most efficient way. It's not too scary to see, I don't know, the dinosaur from your back. I mean, there are so many aspects that have to be iterated and experimented are in the medium. 
scale is a huge thing, you know, because I mean, we will be experiencing everything, this design at actual human scale. And when you ideate and design on the flat screen, it's super hard to come up with the right scale, right? It's, it's not easy. If you're building the um, multi-user experiences, then everything related to, you know, safe and uh, comfortable co-presence with other people um, is crucial and very, very important. So it's, it's also something to think about and uh, iterate about. For example, before shapes, like how we would like try these five menus in less than a minute. I mean, we would every option, we would expert to Unity, create an APK build, and then browse that in a headset to just see, oh, is this better or that better? Now in shapes, you can do that within one minute and anyone around can try it and you can really kind of design and use a test in real time simultaneously, which is like a superpower, I believe, of doing that in the medium. I've already mentioned about body inspired kind of gestures and like new interactions. It's like how you kind of body storm and come up with those things and you really try to utilize that in VR, we can really utilize our entire various like, you know, eye gaze. We can utilize our hands and like entire body to come up with some incredible um, interactions. And these type of things are the success behind uh, some most successful games. And Steve can share about that, but think about Guerrilla Tag or even like super older, um, I don't know, but still a lot of fun Beat Saber. It's just because it feels so natural to the medium and it's, it's super important. Uh, hackathon. This is the footage we made at night at MIT Reality Hack. And this team has been building, I mean, games are not part of MIT Reality Hack, but this was like social game experience. And basically what is happening is body storming or with art of O's prototyping when you uh, play something and you mimic something which does not exist. I mean, it, it might take you 15 minutes to come up with some gameplay. Uh, and uh, explain it and hand it off to your developer and then to Unity. Some highlight examples, you know, some really great apps use shapes to design. Piano Vision is the mixed reality app, and for them it was crucial, you know, to understand and uh, align the UI with the actual physical space, with actual physical piano um, for some use cases. So the team has been using shapes. Um, I probably... Uh, and skip the, the visuals. But anyway, so this is the design happening in mixed reality. We have a powerful storyboarding uh, features or interaction that allow you to tell the story to come up with some UX uh, story like user flow. Um, and uh, it's all like pretty into if you can align, as you can see, uh, your UI to the actual physical product, if any of you consider this type of projects to build. And it's collaborative. Right, so at the end of the day, let's not forget that it's uh, a collaborative app. I'm gonna skip this so that we have more time left for, um, for okay, but it's not popping up for the next slide, uh, for Gabriel for the live demo, but given that we have Steve right now on, um, uh, on this call and as a judge and co-organizer, I don't know his role, but anyway, so, uh, we were super, super inspired to see that Steve has been using shapes to prototype Customania, which is an incredible mixed reality uh, experience, social, like, you know, build a creator, like, kind of uh, experience. And, uh, I mean, I had a pleasure to visit the space in Shapes XR that Steve built, uh, and it was game level design. It was UI prototyping. It was, like, incredibly impressive space that... You know, when you visit it, and if I'm the U Unity developer, I mean, it's super clear what to do next. And you have the scale, you have all your spatial answers. And uh, again, I will start playing a little bit, but then um, I'm going to stop soon. So, I mean, see if you're like super, super talented. And this is the space in shapes. Um, and uh, it's like, you know, VR and mixed reality mode. And this is some of the gameplay here. So definitely Steve can can even better than I can do, but this prototyping can happen just in the actual physical mixed reality uh, environment and you can play over it. And uh, I think these levels are so incredible and inspiring. And like the final footage, of course, it's like the fidelity of it and everything is unbelievable, but the, all the UX is kind of so similar. And you can see that <laughs> it's, it's kind of close to the prototype. And it, I hope that it was... Um, 
a big speed up for the processors. I skip this, but I think the power of shapes and given that shapes is that every hackathon, you are so stressed on the time, right? You only have 48 hours to come up with some incredibly um, inspiring prototype that judges like love and you can explain the idea and probably ideally you can play. So if you just go to Unity immediately, you can waste a lot of time and like to finish something might be super challenging and you will probably rush to the first idea come to mind and it will be hard from the collaboration perspective. And again, I, I speak firsthand in previous life, I was also part of the hackathons. Like in Shapes, we really want to inspire people to start from the ideation spatially all together, just to brainstorm, to really make sure that you pick the right idea and probably even run like super early user tests, like with some others at the hackathon or within your own team to come up with the best uh, spatial idea. Shapes is quick to learn. I mean, I mean, you, you have really like, spend like 30 minutes and then you're up to speed. It's collaborative, which probably the most important feature of Shapes. It's real-time co-creation with your team uh, of various roles. I mean, developer, designer, producer, or just like, you know, future marketing and distribution for the game. It's available in mixed reality and uh, it has no code interaction system that allows you to uh, build simple interactions um, with no code. Uh, just the last slide, almost, Styler. So if you do consider to apply and like you are inspired by this new type of input, instead of controller, you can have a stylers, uh, then sure that you are uh, informer shapes works with a stylus. It's a dedicated build uh, that we can distribute. And it's actually very great feedback we received at AWE when people were trying shapes with the stylus instead of a controller. I mean, not for every use case, but if you are like a very artistic person and you kind of design for yet another pencil app or something like that, that might be uh, pretty powerful uh, for you to use stylus instead of controller. And Yeah, yeah. and maybe just one word thing, uh, about this. Uh, so right now we are finalizing the last detail to make sure that people get the right access uh, in the right way, let's say. So we have gone in the final confirmation, but this is an exclusive opportunity for this app. Right. So people that will join, it's also Logitech is supporting this. We are putting up this build and we hope to have these ready by uh, uh, next week. Right. So that people can with the link and get access mm -hmm. to this and try this. Uh, we will give extra information, but it's important to notice that do you look at that build and use it only if you your prototype, your project is somehow relevant for the 100%. Thing, right? Yeah. So yeah. don't mess up your controller or pairing because we are still early. The pen is not being released. We haven't released a hundred percent stable build of this. I just want to put my hand. You might just lose time. Don't play with someone else, someone's uh, pen if you want to try it, right? And maybe he has set it up, that might be enough. I just want a word of warning and we'll let you know next week to make uh, all the details so that people can access it. Yeah, but again, it's it's actually pretty, um, uh, pretty incredible new type of input. So um, now, Gabriel, the stage is yours about some additional uh, hints on how to be successful at the hackathon. Right. Because so you can I'm, have a strategy that allows you to succeed and go to final and win the prize. So the what I wanted to share here are some five examples of how uh, we have seen people really using uh, shapes in Hackathon as part of their project. But some of these tips uh, are really relevant for Hackathon. Ferran, may, yes. May I interrupt? One thing that I want to interrupt. Uh, by the way, uh, ideation on shapes is possible starting from today. So uh, don't uh, wait for the hackathon day. Today, you can literally start ideation. Of course, this doesn't mean that your idea will be selected, etc. But even to make your idea being selected by the other team members, you need to convince them, right? So make it much more mature with shapes. Start using it starting from today. So ideation is possible as long as you are not creating assets that you will use uh, for the game you have app. competitive advantage exactly <laughs> uh, but uh, you cannot also create even one line of code other than that shapes you can use unlimited before the hackathon so this brings to the point if you are a designer if you are a creative and you want to explain what is your idea based on maybe some research you have done in some of the places that you have visited some of the apps you can start 
ideating and ideating means for it is as easy as getting some um some assets from figma some 3d models and then start building and putting it in space maybe take a picture and then share that idea right this could be as easy and is indeed this is done incredibly uh, uh easily you can get a model from sketchfab from assets like polypizza we have now a huge library with shades 2.0 with assets that could be great for just almost enough this includes also icon so please uh, uh go there and, and and check the new assets that are in 2.0 because they're very extensive so the initial ideation should we work on this tabletop game or should we work on that utility app for example right that would be the question like this and uh, and this is like a great way to start creating quickly just with 3d assets you don't need to do anything it's just a study 3d model the other part is you can build your user flow and that means the series of events of a, it could be a specific interaction. It could be the, the flow of the app, right? And this is done with our stage system. I can show you now. I, I can show you when I'm going in the headset, right? Uh, straight away for people that are not familiar with shapes, what I mean. But we have what is called like um, uh, storyboarding uh uh features where you build different scenes and then you can hop between these scenes. Uh, and that is at the base of our interactivity system. So you can tell a story of an interaction work if the gorilla zilla, the hands of the user goes and then the build crashes, but then do maybe the, the, the pieces start floating around, right? That is an idea you could have. Does it hit other other uh, um, uh, other parts? Can the user grab the other pieces that have fallen? Those are all ideas that you can come up very easily just prototyping and building this user flow. The other thing is communicate with developers. Could you go back in a second? Thanks. Uh, communicate with developers it means that i've seen so many people at hackathon under pressure the designer was like in headset boom 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 and i've seen the designer next to him explaining all oh, right now and that interaction would literally lasted two minutes but that was something that saved them at least two hours and that i can guarantee you right so it's like but how does this animation kind of work yeah yeah and they just mimicking just just showing it in space because you don't have maybe a car in front of you or maybe you don't have a plant in front of you or maybe you don't have a table with with some knights in, in front of you so just the fact of being in the headset with that person can happen and by the way with the um, web implementation right now people can see that uh, with a web editor can see also people that are changing things in real time in space even from the web Right. So that means that they don't even need a headset. So explore also that part because the web editor is very powerful to share these ideas uh, with uh, other people. Um, build the visual assets means, for example, what uh, Eran was mentioning, there are people, and I'm going to show you right now, have built the whole trailer just using assets from shapes. So it is a very powerful tool, uh, complement something that you cannot build. Uh, so it is extremely, extremely valuable because while, for example, all the developers are busy rushing, you as a designer, you as a creative can keep working, can keep contributing to that vision, creating the visual asset, the visual identity, uh, some shots. And this brings you to the next point of things that wouldn't even be possible. This, I want to tell you a little story with about how to expand your story <laughs> and that it's about one of the winning team of the one of the last hackathon uh they win the automotive track and what they did is uh let's say a car that um a mixed reality app where touching different part of a car uh, leads to different sounds so you turn kind of like a car into a dj set the point was that of course the prototype was very limited because being again built in two days they couldn't build much but what happened is that they were they had one of the judges in uh, in shapes to show how that app would transition from mixed reality where you start touching the car some sounds appear to a full VR experience where actually uh, that you are on a stage DJing the car with people confetti and lights. That is an idea that he got when I've seen him wearing the headset. It's like oh okay now I get it. And that trust me has no price. Because giving a judge the view of what the app of what your vision is after building a solid prototype for the last three days, it just has no price. So what I want to do and just show you this example, go to the next to the next slides. And I'm trying to also be in a headset very quickly. Oh, you need permission, Inga. Uh, let's see. May, I, I need to share my screen anyway. Yeah, I'm 
I'm stop sharing so that you can share your screen now. And while you're yeah, sharing, yeah. I want to make sure that uh, the audience understand that. I mean, we really encourage you to go to the headset and uh, collaborate as a team in a headset. If for whatever reason you have a team member that can't be in a headset, we have the web viewer and you can watch like everything happening real time in a headset on the flat screen in web. But just a comment for you to know. Exactly, exactly. So let me show. This is the trailer. It lasts one minute and it was fully built in uh, with shapes uh, with shapes asset. But it in it has many many of the elements that Aaron was mentioning about visual B rolls and whatever. And it's a great example. Uh, now let me just see if you are wait. Let me just make sure that I share um, share sound that I was not sharing. Share share, and now I should be able to. You should be able to hear it. Oh, nice. First plant. Yep. Don't forget, water it hard. Let's face it, caring for plants is really boring. So we've asked ourselves, how do we disrupt house plants industry? Introducing plants that can speak. Look who finally decided to grace me with their presence. Give your plants personality. It's not like I need water or anything, right? Interact with them. If you're going to water me, at least make it interesting. Give them some love, sometimes. You think you could maybe remember to water me once in a while? The more plants you have, the more drama you can experience. I'm picking up some weird vibes from that new succulent you brought home last week. Hey, I'm new. What's up? Did you water your plants? So this was indeed a, a great example built in shapes. And I want to now go in headset and show you how those assets actually look built in, in space. Uh, Fernand, how are we uh, with time actually? I think we do have at least 10 more minutes, so okay, okay, okay. start it later. Gonna... Okay, we are gonna... Okay, and you are now seeing my screen and it should start the streaming any moment. It's coming. Here it is, correct? Mm -hmm. Right, so this is the space that was actually built in Shapes XR. And let's put it like this. You should still be able to actually hear me and you see, these are all assets that have been brought in and then were used then against a plant that now I could use that one, but maybe not. Uh, and indeed, in this case, you see that we have how the UI was all uh, was all laid out. They had a bit of also some of these models uh, that were brought in uh, as well. Uh, and one of the some of the aspects were also done with like mimicking some interaction. For example, at one point they were. Um, Okay, so at one point, they were also mimicking this interaction with giving the heart to the plant. And they just did it in this case like this, like you see right now, right? And those are all examples of this um, prototyping, right? Uh, and, and, and let's say low fidelity prototyping that you can use to then mimic certain interaction. And again, so this is like, okay, if we have a plant, then how do we, for example, provide this information? Like, oops, oh, here we go, right? How do we add those and how do we keep that character around the plant? Should they, should the post-it be on the left side? Should they be around? How does that mix with the, for example, virtual, uh, with, with the real environment? And so these are all assets that have been created. And again, there is no real interaction in here, are just all mockups and ideation that was done in shapes, right? So I think this is a, this is a great example of how this could be um, shapes success has been used also to create this asset. Now I wanna show another one that has instead some of the most advanced interaction that we have seen uh, being this project with the uh, car. And again, this was used with the purpose of, of course, interact, communicate with developer, but also then uh, build the full vision that that was shown to the judges. And in this case, now the car should load. And here we go. Here we are. So now this is a fully playable prototype. That means that there were a sets of interaction that were set here that really allow you to test the prototype for real. So if I push play now, I am actually in the prototype. Oops, 
let me just go back a second because I need to be close to here. So if you then grab the headset and you touch it, then you see that the car kind of like animates. You are brought closer to the car, right? And I'm, I'm not sure you're going to be able to hear it, but touching part of the car, it actually leads to a sound effect. Because now with shapes, you can also simulate sound effect. And this is something that I, I want to also quickly share regarding the AI part. But so touching this triggers sound effects. And then what I was telling you about by touching the front logo, then you have this transition to a full mixed reality headset. And again, the music playing in the background. I'm not sure you can hear it. And this was again all built in Shapes XR using these interactions. Uh, and they've used this also as part of their trailer as well. So again, an example of how you can build, this is, let's say, a more uh, advanced prototype. Now, are you still with me? Uh, I wanna show another example instead that is after, later we go to the AI one, uh, but with the stylus and some of the example that our own team has built uh, in this case for prototyping. Let me get here. So, in, uh, anything? Yeah, uh, Gabriel, you can keep streaming, but I can probably quickly answer the question, like, can we export the stuff we work in shapes into Unity? 100%. And we just updated our Unity plugin to support all the new assets that we introduced in our library. We also have procedural primitives also supported in Unity plugin. It's like a really huge speed up. So you can open entire space uh, in Unity with stages and uh, with all the assets uh, at scale. And yeah, so the answer is yes. Gabriel? Perfect. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. I just wanted to give you the, um, the time to answer. Uh, mm -hmm. So right now, in this case, I want to show you another example. So right now, you would see my controller because I don't have an ink, but uh, an MX ink, but you will imagine that you will have it. And I want to show you a couple of examples. In this case, we are testing how the UI can be can interact or is seen when attached to the controller. So in this case, when I push play, now you see that imagine again, here I have an MX ink. Now this UI that you see the hand, this and this is actually attached. Now what happened is that this is another stage, so another example. So what happened if I, for example, select one option, so you see how this could be, or what if it's more inclined? And I know it might be hard to see, but when you are in VR, you will see a notable difference. Is this flat? Is this inclined? So this is how it will look like. Is this more inclined? This is how, or how do I select it, for example, right? You see that these are three different selection states uh, that you could test and compare with. This is all completely done in Shapes XR. Now, I also want to show you what you see now before they were triggered by just as an example. But now these changes that you will see will be triggered by button press. So for example, if I push my trigger, then you see that it's a selection. If I push the grab, then this is a way to highlight the highlight state. If I push the B button, then you see that this is something that is triggered. Now, again, this allows you to fully prototype uh, uh, UI that is attached to, in this case, your hand or uh, a device or a controller. This could be uh, anything. So this is like uh, something that we are also further improving. But this is, again, a real example of how you can experiment with this um, uh, prototyping uh, feature. There is one more question, Gabriel. Uh, is it mandatory to use Shape 6R? No, I don't think so. I think it's at your own will. And uh, we just want to inspire you that it's super beneficial and it allows you to iterate like so fast. And uh, talk to Steve uh, who won actually one of the meta hackathons and he has been using shapes for prototyping. And there are other winners at Amateur Reality Hack out of 10 finalists. And they were like 11 judges or something, not just like me, I mean. <laughs> and uh, uh, yeah, so I think seven were using shapes as a product. It just gives you like high speed of iteration and uh, trying various ideas and come up with truly spatial ideas. Um, then uh, what about licenses of Shapes XR? Will we get those for uh, for the hackathon? The answer is yes. So if you haven't to use the Shapes XR before, you can immediately start the 30 days trial. I mean, there is a free version, but it's probably limited in some of the, in the number of stages and um, presentation kind of, uh, and, and some other features are, are not there, even though free version is very powerful. You can start the 30 days trial immediately. It's super easy. Uh, if you already completed the trial, uh, then we provide additional licenses and then you should contact Gabriel and we will set you up with the full access. 
yeah sorry gabriel go ahead. perfect no that that's it so let me just just go to one example that this is some another a it is more of an ai concept uh that also we have built so there is first one thing that i want to share uh, many uh, let's say a good amount of these uh of these ai concepts sometimes revolve around someone talking back to you right uh, so in this case, there is a voice telling you something. And when you are building a full prototype right now, the ability to have these, um, to add triggers, uh, let me see, uh, wait a second on click. You see to have the ability to add sounds is actually extremely, extremely powerful. So that means that you can set voices that you have recorded, AI voices or not, and make them as part of your own prototype to simulate, even if you have no AI involved. In this case, if, of course, the, the, the AI involves, like, let's say, a reply from, from a voice assistant. But in this case, for example, here, there are different uh, example of how this AI could look like, right? I mean, there are many ways. Do we want to look at more human, abstract, or do we want to give it a more a UI look? And then we can test and see, okay, this is how maybe the UI then creates a space. Uh, and this actually, I think this was meant, yeah, this was meant to be a VR ex experience. Like, so the UI starts, you talk to the UI and then start object, for example, start appearing. Um, and then these objects are replaced by rough sketches of what these assets are, are right? But then you might want to ask, hey, but how can we replace these assets with actual uh, 3D models? And though in that case, the AI then brings you in, create a portal on your desk, maybe, and then you can start enhancing some of these assets. Then the apple turns into an apple, the base into a base, and then other 3D models that are uh, in the scenes. So again, this is an example. And the, the truth is that when you're prototyping for AI, there is a good chance that that might involve the, uh, the mixed reality work. Right. And that is why we are indeed here in mixed reality. And then you can do a lot of that prototyping and visualization when you are here. Uh, audio could be another way in which you can uh, use it and enrich this experience. The audio can be triggered by button presses or by something touching. And again, you could build a much more believable experience just as a mock-up. And then, for example, pick what is the most valuable for uh, that specific uh, hackathon or something that you can pick up and throw away uh, because you just don't have the time. But you have built it, and this is something that you can certainly use to teach your vision to the judges, to your developers right now when you're trying to find the team and so on. So these are some of the things that I want to share. Yeah. One, one thing that I would like to add quickly, because it's very important, actually, um, I also mentioned in the previous session, maybe you have served so that we will have an AI session in a few uh, minutes, I think in, yeah, let's say in uh, maybe 30 minutes or so. Um, if you have a very specific use case, you probably need a real object, right? That you want to bring to the hackathon. Let's say if you are doing uh, origami, you will bring the origami, uh, maybe physical tools that you can also use the possibility of uh, image understanding or uh, object detection, right? So maybe uh, the sh this uh, objects that you mentioned can be a very nice tool when you don't have these object, physical objects today that you can, when you are prototyping that you can utilize this as a physical object replacement to understand how the object detection uh, or image uh, recognition may work uh, for your own use case. Does it make sense, Gabriel? I don't know. Uh, yeah, it's... yeah. I think if you have then a 3D models, it could be maybe a robot for which you need to have do maintenance of or whatever, then you can still explain what the interaction, what parts of the robots maybe are recognized and so on. So imagine, I mean, Shape6 is an incredibly flexible prototyping tool because you can throw anything in there and it's very much a communication tool. So remember that, be flexible. And then you have seen how many people use like ways to abstract interaction or, or, or communicate these ideas, not necessarily writing code. That, that's basically what we are. Perfect, perfect, great. Uh, we have also uh, like some questions that we answered. I know that some of you have questions, but please, please ask these questions also on Discord as well. We are trying to answer as much as we can. Um, so uh, if you have any burning questions, please let us know. Uh, the AI related questions we will answer. MetaPresence platform, it's coming with Sean now in a few minutes. But uh, let's finalize the iteration, prototyping, and validation packaging part. 
are there any thing that shapes team you would like to add before we re, uh, re wrap up? Inga, anything else? I mean, I just again want to say that it's it's collaborative and it's cross-platform. Like you can be on Quest, someone is in web, or you're all on Quest. This is important. You can again bring your own assets and which look more photorealistic. You can bring your scans of the environment. Uh, if you want to build like collocated mixed reality experience or like, yeah, so there are lots of things that you can explore before the hackathon. So use these days uh, to get acquainted with the tool. And uh, again, for the licenses, start the free trial or reach out to Gabriel and we will set you up with the full access. So sure. the other thing is about also to remember, I mean, one thing I'm, 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 I really saw and I'm, I'm really glad about is that how Shapes empowers the creatives. Because it feels they are always kind of like struggling or weaker. Maybe they don't have the, the right thing or maybe the timing. It's it's it, it's too crunch and developers only take all, all the work. I, I've seen the creatives like being like championed really by their by mm -hmm. the team because they became more powerful. That's really what it is because you can now start creating in 3D. Uh, you can start an interactive prototype and really help the develop, develop, developers in meaningful ways, uh, right? So I think what Ferran said, if you have stuck ideating now, pitch your idea. You might find that you have a much easier time also finding your, your a good team because then you have a good idea that people get. It's not just a bunch of sketches. It's not just about something abstract. And this is going to continue also during the hack as well. And I even want to say that the second place at Amateur Reality Hack of all, like not Shape 6 are nominated, but just like entire kind of final, uh, were the team that they even didn't touch Unity at all. So that was entire pitch and presentation, super interactive, just, you know, in a headset in shape. That was even surprising for me. But for some reason, they didn't have Unity resource. And it was so self-explanatory and so inspiring that... I mean, it was sometimes even more impressive than just trying half ready or non ready Unity prototype. Uh, the only thing is, in this uh, hackathon, I think we oh, will must. probably okay. exactly because it's a meta. <laughs> I'm sorry. Meta, yeah. okay. Anyway, uh, plug I mean, in. <laughs> I mean uh, of course, you can do with uh, shapes, but we recommend at least one uh, strong developer in every team to, especially the second uh, uh, category or criteria is. Meta presence platform MR or AI mm -hmm. capabilities. So mm -hmm. that's the reason that uh, unfortunately they need to have at least one developer. You can still uh, welcome, you can still uh, hack, but uh, in terms of if you are looking forward to stand out a little bit, uh, that part is important. Uh, Sean is with us, so uh, we will slowly go to the development side of things a little bit. But uh, one question that I saw multiple times just to tell you that. Uh, if you have a concept that also works in MR, uh, most probably it is not the most expected concept for, for the hackathon. It should be much more relevant for MR first. And then if there's a VR version that it can uh, look at. So just to let you know that um, this is a quite an MR heavy um, experience. That's why we are doing our best to create these courses for free, these workshops. Uh, available for you and Sean will explain a lot of tips for you to survive from the meta presence platform SDKs uh, our master trainer on the all the meta meta uh, related SDKs so uh, shapes is amazing uh, iterate fast use use your uh, time you have a lot of days till the hackathon so use that using shapes with your team or alone uh, and then when you come to the hackathon I think it's a little bit like development time that you need to um, a little bit uh, get to know uh, how you will all combine all the superpowers that we are providing to you. Okay. Good luck, so, everyone. Perfect. Thank you very awesome. much. Thanks, everyone. Ferran. Thanks. By the way, we had one announcement. Um, that's why I was a little bit uh, dealing with that. Sorry for that. But uh, I want to make this announcement. Uh, and then maybe uh, afterwards, we will start with Sean. Uh, let's see the announcement. What is it is? I hope you can see my screen. How many of you know Resolution yes, Games? Yes, we see Tommy on screen. Yeah.
yes. So Resolution Games is coming to XR Hack. Uh, the founder of uh, uh, Resolution Games is uh, becoming judge as well. So this is a very nice opportunity because uh, this means that probably the biggest XR game studio is uh, supporting you hackers. Uh, they are probably, I would say, the the top studio in terms of the number of and the quality of mixed reality experiences. Demio, everyone knows, I guess. So uh, especially on mixed reality, I think they have uh, used a lot of mixed reality uh, superpowers that we will go into. I'm pretty sure they are strong user of Shapes XR. No, Inga? Someone um, in the team does. I'm pretty sure about that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, <laughs> yeah. I got the game to it. But you can even find the Demir uh, template uh, in shapes and see how oh. you can feel like super low poly. It's one of the samples. Amazing, amazing. Actually, we have one category, which is not only specific gaming, but it says social, casual game and tabletop gaming, right? So this is actually a um, very nice focus. We are, we are not expecting so much FPS VR games, right? It's much more like... Uh, it's all it's already crowded a lot in the store so we are expecting a little bit much more like how i can play games that i can actually socially interact co-located or remotely so uh, that's an amazing opportunity that resolution games are joining us so uh, with this good news i would like to thank again to the shapes team uh, for for some locations they will be present they are actually having very interesting workshops on top of this one so you will be definitely having enough shapes uh, uh, daily dose of shapes, I would say. But in addition to that, uh, they will also be available uh, on every location on Discord as well. So yeah. in case you have so we will be we will have our our, uh, our folks giving a workshop in uh, London. I will be present in Cologne, uh, so that you can count on us there. And then of course we'll keep support on Discord. Exactly. And some of our team already knows shapes than using, so they will also support on site. So um, we will have a shapes team like we said with Photon. We will have a shapes uh, channel, photon uh, channel, a meta SDK channel. So you can ask questions uh, under technical category, these questions according to uh, which SDK or tool that you are having problems with. Okay, perfect. Thank you again. Uh, thank you to, to the team. We will see each other soon in a few bye days. Bye, guys. So thank you, Gabriel. Thank you. Bye. Inga, bye. Great, great. So... Um, I know that we are a little bit like 10 minutes or something, a little bit uh, 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 overdue, but uh, I think this is perfect time now uh, that we have uh, the development side of things shown. Uh, we have around, I, I would say, 30 minutes. So let's make a very nice, uh, maybe detailed thing. Anyways, um, I'm assuming that everyone has access to the Udemy course. Um, I would like to actually hear maybe, um, hear maybe, Whoever has already gone through the Udemy course, uh, would you like to, uh, can you raise your hand if you already know and gone through the uh, GorillaZilla Udemy course? Let me uh, share my screen to show what I mean by that. Um, if you don't know the uh, course, uh, so I can share here. So just raise your hand so we can see how many people already gone through the Udemy course. Our team is sharing bitly. Yeah, if it is 75% or even half of the content, it's also counted. Don't, uh, because there are some voice SDK, etc. you may not want to use, but especially the mixed reality features. Um, so that's very important data for us because we will we will make our uh, discussions accordingly. Um, so this is the course that includes everything our team will share the link of on discord server actually right now they will send on the announcement channel the bitly link of the udemy course uh, so please uh, please uh, click that do not pay so there's a payment here but do not pay because it's free we are just giving a discount code 100 discount code so it's available okay so uh, the creator of this famous course, course over 5,500 people gone through. And now the creator is here, the master trainer, Sean, with us. There is no better person that can explain this other than meta teams, maybe even better, better than, <laughs> we don't know. But uh, now uh, stage is yours, Sean. Maybe we can give very practical tips for developers here. 
again, we expect everyone that they, you are going through this workshop, this next 30 minutes, and also the Udemy course before coming to the hackathon. If you are aiming to take the development role in your in your team, okay. If you are becoming a developer, we are assuming that you already gone through the the course and today's uh, session. Just to make sure that everything is clear. Perfect. Sean, stage is yours. If you want, you can. Awesome. Also yeah. Thank you very much, Farhan. Can you hear me? Okay. Yeah. Perfect. Fantastic. Thank you so much. It's a pleasure to be here today and to see all of you. Uh, and for those of you who've already been through the GorillaZilla course, uh, some of the information might be familiar that I'll share today, and some of it might be new as well. I originally uh, planned for an hour long presentation, but I think now it's more like 20 or 30 minutes. So the good news is that you'll get a really condensed uh, presentation. <laughs> it's like the, the difference between drinking milk and condensed milk, right? <laughs> exactly. exactly. It'll, it'll be nice and thick with the the key information. So with that, let me go ahead and share my screen. We yeah, are getting so much uh, nice feedback. Would you like would, you, would just say that Sean's course is much better taught than the most Udemy courses? Thank you for that nice uh, feedback. Awesome. Uh, so I just switched to the full screen slide view. Uh, is that what you can see, Farron? Okay, yeah. fantastic. If there's any issues during the presentation, feel free to let me know. Uh, so what I'll be covering today is... May, uh, I, may I do something because we need to yeah, yeah. stop the uh, recording and then open again? 